So uh, what do we think of what we just heard from Peter Navarro? Let's ask our panel. Stock Swoosh founder Melissa Armo, Jackie DeAngelis is back with us, and Fox News contributor Gary Kalpam. Uh, Gary, you do have to hand it to this administration. They, they have focused on China in a way that no other administration in my lifetime has. They've removed sort of the cover of a lot of the China's uh, bad doings with regard to us, whether it's trade or the military expansion or whatever. I think for the first time, I have no argument with anything Peter Navarro just had to say. <laughs> uh, the fact that we're getting somewhere with China, if we can that we're getting rid of the tariffs, I think that's held back. I think GDP would have been three already uh, without them. Uh, and, and leave no doubt, China's about a $12, $13 trillion economy. If we can get them on a real good free trade side, uh, that's not only good for them and us, but for the rest of the world. Uh, and one thing he did leave out, though, but I have to mention, I think is uh, great for the economy and even greater for the markets is uh, central banks around the globe continue to just liquefy the world. And that is really helping out negative rates, zero rates, Although a lot of printing. Although some pulling away from the negative rates. But Jackie, uh, it's clearly the market was, was enthusiastic that our Fed, our central bank, stopped raising rates. Yeah. And that's why we had that big drop last December. We've come back 6,000 points on the Dow since then. He thinks we can go up to 32,000. <laughs> that, that, uh, in 2020. It's definitely an aggressive target, but I want to speak to uh, his point on GDP, which I think is going to be a big market driver, right? Uh, we're roughly around 2% right now with these uh, phase one China reforms going into play, with USMCA going into play, getting to 2.5% um, as forecasted. It doesn't seem like it's that tough to do, um, and that's going to be really exciting for the stock market and will help us move forward. 32,000, you know, I mean, look, we're sort of at the top of the cycle here and investors still think there's room to run. So it'll be exciting to watch. And I just wanted to make one point about sure. what Mr. Navarro said um, in the agreement, as, as it was announced, at least the in the China beginning, agreement. the phase one China deal, the U.S. did say structural reforms in IP, technology transfer, agriculture, financial services, mm -hmm. currency and foreign exchange. We don't know exactly how deep it's going to go, but it is an expansive agreement. Melissa, he also talked about business investment, putting the most positive light on it, of course, uh, from the administration perspective, but there there were questions about whether businesses were investing in, in hardware. That is, they're clearly investing in jobs. We got 7 million new jobs, uh, but not so much as in investment in the hardware. He thinks that's turning around. Do you? I'm not so sure it matters. Really, I think one of the reasons that we had such a good year for 2019 is because we have the first full year since the tax cuts. So 2018, we had the first full year. Now we're seeing the effect and the results of that in corporations and the earnings and the market, which is this year, which is they're hiring more people and people are making more money and corporations are saving on the tax cuts, which has helped the stocks, which has helped the market because the market is made up of companies that are individual stocks. But, but the problem with the Dow, I see, is Boeing. It's down. It was down Friday when the market made new highs. It's dragging right. the Dow down. So to say we're going to hit 32,000 on exact time, exact second exact date, I cannot. I like to look at the S&P and what I think is strong is the banks. J.P. Morgan Chase is just flying, flying like a rocket. And Goldman Sachs is not back up to the highs. So uh, probably Goldman is going to go back up to the highs and pull the S&P. And I think I'm just, I'm not saying 2020. I'm saying five years out, Trump gets reelected, which I think is high odds. Yeah. You, could, you could maybe even see 3,500 in the S&P. You could even maybe see 4,000. Wow. So, I mean, I think with huge potential, <laughs> yeah. huge potential on the market, I don't know know if you're going to see all of that in yeah. 2020. Gary, I want to talk about jobs because that's something everybody can identify with. When you have a strong jobs market, I've never seen a, a stronger one than the one we have now. A again, I mentioned in a previous segment, the CBO, a neutral organization, was expecting 2 million jobs by now from the time uh, the president was inaugurated. We've had 7 million jobs. Uh, each job, it's estimated, costs about $10,000 for the company to train that worker. That's a huge, that's an investment we don't hear much about. Uh, one of the most underreported uh, major events uh, from the regular media is not reporting on how great the job market is. 3.5%. We used to love it 4.5%. The unemployment and, figure, and, and, yeah. Yes, and the other side of it is that 
six to seven million people off welfare, no longer getting a Great check, point. but producing a check to the government. And, you know, I work very closely with families and children, and to see people that couldn't find a job for two years now in a job getting paid 50000 you should see the smiles on yeah. their face. They're so happy, and I just think that feeds on itself. It is a virtuous cycle right now. Keep fingers crossed that it continues. Nothing bad happens if jobs keep are plentiful. Right. we got to leave it at that, gang. Thank you very much. Well, forget the ball and Times Square dropping. Americans are waiting for the details from the Durham investigation to drop. What should we expect from that report? Some possible clues when we come back.